Vietnam, one of the world's five remaining communist countries, is about to pick its new leadership. But unlike, let's say, the United States, where general elections are held to decide on new decision makers, in Vietnam, only communist party members get a vote. Here's how it works. Every five years, nearly 1,600 party delegates gather in the capital Hanoi to select new leaders and set the country's policy directions for the next five years. The National Party Congress usually goes on for about a week. This will be the 13th, and it may reshuffle the team, who will steer the fast-growing Asian nation through a period of global recession, balance tense relations involving China and the United States, and deal with increasing international attention to human rights concerns. Now let's take a look at the leadership structure. Unlike its communist counterparts like China and North Korea, Vietnam has four pillars of leadership made up of the General Secretary, Prime Minister, President and Chair of the National Assembly. At the National Party Congress, delegates will first elect a 200-person Central Committee. The committee will then vote for the Politburo members, who will in turn nominate the country's four highest leaders. The voting process is highly secretive and opaque. In theory, Ascent to the highest levels of Vietnamese politics is governed by limits on age and geographical origin. For example, there has never been a general secretary who did not come from the northern half of the country. Another rule is that Politburo members over the age of 65 should retire, but there are often exceptions and sometimes surprises. Incumbent 76-year-old General Secretary Nguyen Phu Chao has been one of the most powerful men in Vietnam for decades. Observers expect him to continue as party chief, but also predict Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phuc could be looking to rise up the ranks. What about policy issues? Most analysts expect continuity. Having benefited from the U.S.-China trade dispute, Vietnam is steadily growing into one of the world's most important tech manufacturing and textile making hubs. The country's GDP growth averaged 6% over the past five years and still expanded 2.9% in 2020. On the foreign policy front, maintaining a balance between China and the United States will be key. Even though Vietnam's relations with the U.S. have been warm in recent years, there have been trade tensions as of late. The Trump administration labeled Vietnam a currency manipulator late last year, raising the prospect of U.S. tariffs on Vietnamese goods. Vietnam's leadership will also be acutely aware of China's continued importance to their nation's security and economic well-being but they may have to deal with Beijing's increasingly aggressive claims to vast, potentially energy-rich swaths of the South China Sea, part of which overlaps with Vietnam's exclusive economic zone. 